In this variation of the London system, the one with e3 and c3 structure, we got this queen b6 move, right? And then we've got queen b3, and now black plays c4, as we've seen in previous videos, and the queen goes back. So as you might remember, the move now is e5, and it can this pawn can be taken bishop over the pawn. So let's say white takes with the bishop. What's the move now? Bishop f5. This is all in the second and third video. We went through just a lot of stuff like queen d2, queen c1, and all the things in order for the queen to stay to to get saved from the bishop and protect the pawn in b2. What we're gonna go through is what happens after queen takes bishop. This is inaccurate but it is played a lot and it is actually very dangerous so black is going to need to play accurately what happens now why why did we give up a bishop of course because then queen b2 traps the rook the thing is we got to play very careful now so after queen to b2 white continues with knight to f3 now for example black cannot take the rook we're going to be losing if we take the rook now queen to c2 and this queen is trapping our queen right the queen is protecting everything so after queen to c2, there is no way out, especially after bishop to e2 and castle. Okay, we're going to lose our queen, right? Knight a3, and the queen is lost. Now, of course, white doesn't get to play many moves in a row, but how are we going to stop it? And the thing is, you actually can't. So after queen c2, black has to play f6 in order to attack the bishop, right? That's our best chance. Yet, after bishop to g3, the idea is to play bishop a3 and give the support to the queen while she goes to b2. To b2. The problem is that white can play e4 and queen b2 now is already not possible because of knight takes bishop, queen takes back, and now after pawn takes pawn in d5 and the knight has to move again, well, the knight will have to go to a5 in order not to lose the c-pawn as well. But then after d6, black is just completely lost. Black has achieved absolutely nothing. So going back a few moves, after e4, even if black were to play this move, like bishop b2, maybe with an idea of playing queen a2, then knight goes to d2, and this queen just isn't going anywhere ever. I mean, would you really like to play this kind of game? These two pawns are going to fall eventually. The queen can't move, and white's pieces are all developed except this rook, but it's not going to take long for white to castle, and white's got the bishop pair as well, so definitely not, never going to play this kind of game. So we have to be really careful. So let's go back to the initial position. Right, here we are. Queen takes b2, that's correct, but now after knight f3, we have to play. What's the crucial move here? Considering that the white player is aiming at going to c2 with the queen, knight g to e7. Now the queen will not be able to go to g6 or, or, or e4, d3 and, and c2 simply because she'd get taken in any of these squares. And so now white, white's best move is queen to h5. So all the next moves that the white player will play are computer moves. I've been doing my best to see what are the best chances for the white player to get out of this trouble. And in this exact situation, I'm going to tell you when is the exact moment we need to take the rook. And then after white playing the, after white playing the absolute best moves, black will still be winning and in a position of complete tranquility. So we're going to go on just a few more moves. After queen to h5, wh why queen h5? Why is this a computer move? Well, it's very simple. It, it stays near the king. The bishop is still attacking this diagonal. So g6 might come with the threat like queen g5. We're getting that in a second. And well, of course, it wouldn't, also the queen... Where else could she have gone to? In any other place, she would have been, she would have been less active. Somewhere maybe in g4 or, in, uh, or h3, she would have been far away from the action. So after queen to h5, now it's the right moment to take. So where's the best move for white? Knight d2, protecting this knight. So now the question is, can, what, can the black player just take the pawn and you know win a little bit more material and then get out of it? Well, no, it's not recommendable. Although black is still slightly better, but black is still better. But with no engines, there's no need to play a greedy move like queen a2. So the best move to continue now is, the, be the best thing to do now to continue is uh, development. And after we continue with development, we might just be able to take that pawn and, and get away with it. But first of all, let's develop. g6 is an excellent move. It attacks the queen, so the bishop will not be able to take the rook yet. The queen goes to g5 now, applying pressure to the dark squares. So now we have to move the rook to g8. And after bishop to f6, these are just computer moves. And I know that the pressure seems a lot, but we're still okay. h6 comes. The queen will have to move again. Now the queen is away and the bishop develops. Black does not need to take this pawn early enough. Okay, the queen is safe because this queen now is out of this area, out of the queen side area. So we're safe. Our queen is safe. So... White's best move now is bishop takes, and of course don't take with the king. Personally, I was scared of taking with the knight because of some sort of infiltration of the queen here, but that's not a problem at all, because even if queen c7, then simply queen b2 protecting the pawn, 
and then next move, well, white cannot really do anything except developing a maybe castle, but then queen b6 will solve the problem once for all, and we're absolutely winning here. So let's go back a few moves. So we take with the knight, and then after bishop e2, black can long castle, and now carry on. Well, white can castle as well, and now we can finally take this pawn with a pretty good advantage. Right, here we are in the starting position. c4 and queen c2, then is met by e5. What happens after pawn takes and then bishop f5? So queen takes is not the same thing as the previous line, you know, because the bishop could have taken or the pawn could have taken, so it's two different things. We still go on to take the pawn in b2, threatening the rook. Now, what are white's best chances? Knight f3 is still matched by knight, to g, knight g to e7, and we have a very similar scenario to the previous game. Here, white's best move now, straight after queen takes pawn in b2, is e6. So threatening this checkmate in f7 and then d7. So after this, we have to take the pawn. Queen takes, and then we block with the bishop. Now white goes on with bishop e2. So the question is, can we take the rook now? Yes, but it's risky. And the advantage that we get is very limited one. I mean, we, we do get an advantage of like uh, something like minus 170 or something, but it's not ideal. Why did white play bishop e2? Well, because he was threatening bishop h5, and then g6 would be met by bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, and strong initiative by white. Then we're going to have to play like engines, which we are not, in order to resist the attack. So that's not ideal. After bishop e2, let's see what happens. Okay, let, let's actually try it. Queen takes and then bishop check. And now we're in trouble. Well, I mean, we're going to have to play g6. If we play king f8, then this is checkmate. If we play king d8, then this is checkmate soon. Because where are we going to go? We can't go here, here, or here. So we have to go here and then see what happens. So g6 is forced. And then bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, king d8, and then knight f3. It's, uh, black still has some, uh, well, the queen is still protecting the knight, so we can't take it. Black still has some advantage, but as I said already, we're going to have to play like real engines. There's no need to give white such a good initiative. Let's go back to the initial position. After e6, we take, queen takes, bishop e7, and now white goes on with bishop e2, threatening bishop h5. So what do we play? Knight f6. There's no need to go and take this rook because the rook is trapped. So after knight to f6, knight to f3 by white, because white needs the castle as soon as possible, and now we can take the rook castle, white has finished the development, and the rook gets to protect the knight, and now black goes on with this move to remember, it's knight to d8, attacking the queen, and the queen will have to move either to f5 or h3, as we said, h3 is kind of far away from the game, f5 is the only move that makes sense, after queen to f5, we can finally take the pawn in a2, our queen can finally breathe, and after the best move by white, which is knight d4, well, white player has been playing only best moves so far, so after knight to d4, g6, and now after queen to g5, knight to f7, and queen to g3, black can finally castle, and the advantage is solid in favor of black.